Well, Matt, I just want to thank you personally again for being my co-host on the Voice Masters live stream today. It Thanks for having me. It's fun. A lot of fun. Um, it was a great presentation. I hope that, and just letting people know if they missed it and they want to get access to that, it's available in our archives through our premium membership. Uh, what did you enjoy the most about the live stream today? Oh, it was fun. I mean, it's fun to see everybody actually there. I've done some of these on a webinar where you don't get to actually see people. So that was fun. And of course, working with the singers and uh, both of them being willing to jump in. And uh, it's kind of fun to be able to work with people on other parts of the world. You know, it's uh, it's great. You got the international audience. It was nice to see so many people from so many different backgrounds. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah, seriously, when we look at the spread, uh, literally every continent around the world is is represented and it's it's growing so that's that's very fun um why would you recommend that singers voice teachers tune into voice masters live stream well, i think anytime that anybody can get new ideas to flesh out in their uh, you know in their head and to play around with and put on their voice it can only help them get to be better i mean look it takes a village none of us I, I say that there's a few people I meet who really feel like they've learned everything from one person, but I think that's really rare. It's not my uh, story at all. I feel like I'm constantly learning, uh, you know, from even some of your guests. I mean, we were talking about, you know, one in particular that's doing some fascinating research I'm interested in, but I look at the rest of your guest list and I'd like to hear what they have to say. You know, uh, music's constantly evolving, constantly changing. And so the more ideas that we can get about ways we can use our voice, the uh, better we are as artists. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love um, um, your approach. My approach is that it's all of this information and science and learning that we have. We, we, I feel a, a responsibility to just filter it down to something a singer can use, um, you know, and, and, and help their singing immediately. That's what, that's what our singers are looking for. So let me share the first question today with you, with, with everybody. I'm going to pop it up big here. How can I use my mixed voice without straining or felling, feeling awkward? Good. So look, there's, there's many different things that can come into this. And so like, I'm going to throw out a couple of ideas, but mind you that there's many other things that we could talk about as well. Uh, it's always when you're giving this advice, you're going to give it based off of one of the majority issues that you see or, you know, your uh, big experience and not all the individual factors that can come in. What I tend to find is that people are not working with all of the vocal qualities that they have available to them. And then therefore they end up straining, trying to force their folds to do something when their folds aren't fully coordinated. Now we didn't get into all the muscles today, but we have the uh, inner arytenoid muscles in the back, which adjust how tightly those vocal folds come together. Then there's a muscle here in the side called the lateral cricloarytenoid muscle that helps control how these come together. Then you have an actual muscle in the vocal folds called the thyroid arytenoid muscle that helps shorten and thicken the folds. And then you have a cricothyroid muscle which helps elongate the folds. Any pitch you sing, all four of those muscles are involved. And that's where we run into difficulties. It's not a talent issue. It's a coordination issue. You literally got four different muscles in your throat that are trying to figure out the fine tuning necessary to get whatever register you're going for on whatever pitch you're trying to sing. And so to me, the best thing you can do is start getting the voice exploring all the possibilities. So I like to make sure that all my clients know what their pure chest voice is. So in my voice, it's that really buzzy, in all voices, it's that buzzy quality. And mine, it sounds like this. Ah, has that nice buzzy, I'm more of a baritone, so that's what we have. And then we also want to explore the falsetto or the head voice qualities. And get those working then we want to look in that middle part of the voice where things transition over so for me let's say like f below middle c to fg above middle c i have lots of options there uh let's say that's for our uh, estrogen dominant singers our biological female singers they're going to be dealing a lot with what happens around maybe like this d above middle c to the octave above that because that's where we have choices about how belty or speech like or heady something is so what you're going to want to do is train in that range with both qualities. I want to be able to take this mid part of my voice and get it in that lighter head place. But I also
also want to have it in the solid chest place. So I can choose those extremes. Then what I want to do is start playing around with everything in the middle. And my preference for introducing that is using a modified Mesa de Voce exercise. Uh, and this is a registration based one. Now in traditional voice teaching, we'll a lot of times do dynamic voice, um, uh, dynamic based Mesa de Voce exercises where you're trying to keep a similar tone. But in this one, we're gonna start off with a breathy tone, grow up into that full chesty tone, and then come back to breathy. And we're gonna do it as slow as we can. Now, I'm out of shape and a little tired from a week of teaching. We'll see where this is. But so we're, again, cultivating this for each individual. I'll take this pitch. And just see how smoothly I can work it out. Because all along that way of growing, I'm in different registers. And then I peek out and then I come backwards. Then you reverse it. And you start at your full chest, go back to head, and then go back to your full chest. So, ah, and what that's doing is it's fine tuning those four intrinsic muscles to be able to, you know, go through all these different positions and make these different qualities. Then I can take a singer and say, I want us to grow and I'm gonna point at you where I want you to stop and we'll vocalize with that quality. So, uh, 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 we'll play with that heady mix. Or I could do, uh, blah, 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 and play with that kind of mix. And then in those bumpy spots, if I'm trying to learn how to carry up chest into the upper part of my range, Essentially, what I need to do is thin out a little bit as I go up high. Otherwise, I'll sound like a yell, right? If I take pure chest up, yeah, 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 that gets yelling. So instead, I got to thin out a bit. So we take that same idea of starting with chest, thinning out to head, and then coming back to chest, and we put it on glides through that middle zone. So we do. Ah. start teaching the body how to thin out after we've done a lot of those I then put a word phrase to it and a situation so for instance let's say you're uh, walked into a coffee shop there's somebody who's been harassing you outside they follow you in and you're like look leave me alone you don't want to yell because you're in a coffee shop so you don't want to go I said stay away because that's yelling so instead we start off there which is chest but we got to thin out to hold it in and then be assertive towards the end. So then we use that phrase, I said stay away, to be able to integrate this idea of mix. But we're integrating it based off of a situation. Like on the opposite end, let's say I really wanna teach somebody to let their chest voice rip. Let's imagine we're outside at a gas station and somebody comes begging you for money, you feel uncomfortable and you wanna make a scene. You're going to let out that chest voice to be heard and you're going to say, I said go away. I said, go away. That's going to elicit that strong chest voice. So through this combination of exercises, we start to explore all the possibilities. We connect them to the storyteller and we're constantly making variations that coordinate those intrinsic muscles. And I find that through that work, about 80% of people are going to unlock a lot of the issues that you describe. And then if those things don't work, we got to look at faults in the vocal track, the posture or the breath that may be getting in the way. I had myself there on mute because <laughs> while, while you're talking, I'm, I'm just, you know, getting ahead with the questions, but <clears throat> loved it. Loved it. Yeah. The, and the, the core essence of it all is, you know, you know there's a lot of uh, disagreement like you talked about in the live stream. We've put a bunch of voice teachers in a room uh, with a plate of food. They're going to starve to death after a while because they'll never agree on terminology, right? But... Um, <laughs> If what you know the first thing we look for in a mixed voice the first thing I do is I, I try and identify with the singer what sound they're actually after yeah, because absolutely. they might they might be calling something mixed that that I don't know what they mean with that because it is kind of in between and like I said all of these things are moving engaged and working together 
And so all the, those are just some fantastic tools and thanks for sharing all of that to develop, I, I like to call it a range of motion, right? The yeah. range yeah. of motion between coordination between these, it is all about coordination. And a lot of singers have the feeling they've got to be able to do everything. This was my maybe my problem, but it's also helped me become a good teacher and, yeah. and a good crossover singer. I just wanted to sing everything, right? But not every singer does. And yeah. so by helping, by really, you need to identify with somebody together, a professional coach, what sound you're after. And then you can get, we can get more specific in guiding you to that. But these, all these tools that Matt just gave us are going to help you develop the coordination necessary for a lot of flexibility. And that's really what the good mezzo di bocce and, and mix area is. It's, it's uh, that sliding scale right in there. Um, and also one thing I just add to that is uh, look, manage really you got to manage the volume level when you're yes. when you're in the mix that's the main mistake i i i people just seem to not to be aware of that mix singing is never loud it's got a volume range you know depending on okay i'm comparing to like maximum human volume level and minimum human volume level mix is really somewhere there in the middle and it's in the volume level. So most of the singers, you're never going to get that that nice, easy metallic sound if you're pushing too much volume, too much air pressure. The instrument is just our voice instrument, our biomechanical instrument. It's not designed to do that. It's designed to make loud volume with other settings. So um, pay attention. Yeah, and it's, I'm going to say I have some talks on audio technology yeah. up on my YouTube page. I'm about to release another one soon. Uh, but basically going through of showing people exactly how much um, audio technology can alter our perception of the voice. I made a singular recording of me on my cell phone and this mic at the same time. And then I edit the mic in GarageBand and then compare it to the cell phone, which is the same voice. Yet they sound <laughs> night and day difference by the time yeah. you amped everything up. And if singers aren't taking that into consideration, they try to reproduce acoustically what was created electronically. And that will give them those misconceptions too. You're talking about with mix. Yeah, they hear these uh, artists on the radio and they forget that they're like ten inches from a mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah so true. And also the emotional. You know, it, it can sound so intense, and the, the, you can get you it sounds on the recording that we're hearing right through the speakers like they're screaming their lungs out or super loud. But the reality is they're not. And because if if you let the emotional drive, especially of rock music get to you and you start adding more and more and more it's just not gonna work those guys are really good at toning down what's going on in here to create this sound illusion that makes our hearts you know just and our pulse just you know the blood just really pulse absolutely <laughs> yeah. um, smoke and mirrors all right smoke and mirrors <laughs> great let's <laughs>